Hi, this is uh, Kusum Lata from uh, SAC 2014 at Washington. And here I have a pleasure to talk to Dr. Bhatt from Brigham. And thank you so much, Dr. Bhatt, for agreeing to talk to us. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, so first of all, I want to ask you about the question uh, about the simplicity trial, which came yesterday. And is still there are some role of renal degeneration, especially in some of the non-compliant patients or whether the patients have uh, LVH or in heart failure patients. So what's your saying in that? Absolutely no, no for renal degeneration or whether we can do it saying that those patients might get benefited? Well, that's a great question, and I think in medicine it's best to never say always or never. So I wouldn't say never. Uh, of course, this is an investigational procedure in the U.S., so it's not an option outside of clinical trials, but it is available in over 80 countries outside the U.S. And, you know, in general, I think when there's a negative trial, there needs to be caution about using a drug or a device or, or a strategy. But I could imagine, for example, in a patient who keeps coming in with hypertensive encephalopathy every few weeks to the ER, not taking their medications, that's not the sort of patient we studied. Maybe there's a role for renal denervation in that sort of patient. So I wouldn't tell a doctor who's in that tough situation with a patient who might stroke out any week, you know, not to try something. But in general, as a standard procedure for resistant hypertension, given our negative findings, I wouldn't recommend it. For other disease states, there's investigation going on, even in the U.S., for disease states such as heart failure as an adjunct to arrhythmia treatment. And I think those investigations, both in the U.S. and ex-U.S., should continue. All right. So I have a while ago, the test trial came in for thrombus aspiration. And it's still uh, there are, uh, in some patients, still we go ahead and do the thrombus aspiration. Depends on what's the thrombus burden. Uh, a, a while ago, we had a patient, we aspirated, and there were no plaque or nothing we could find, even by OCT. So what's your saying in that, you know, why this trial came back negative and still we are doing that? Sure. Well, I, I've got to confess, I'm still doing uh, routine manual thrombus aspiration in the setting of ST elevation MI. And yes, taste was negative for its primary endpoint of 30-day mortality, but that's a 30-day endpoint. It's one trial. There's actually another trial that's ongoing, a larger trial that the group at McMaster University is coordinating, the total trial. So I want to wait and see what that trial shows. If it's corroborative and also shows no benefit, you know, maybe then I'll change my practice. But until then, even if the procedure isn't reducing mortality, there's some practical benefits. It can simplify the procedure, uh, allow direct stenting, maybe decrease the length of stent that needs to be implanted. In fact, that was seen within the TASTE trial. And there are occasional cases, like you mentioned, where perhaps you don't even need to put in a stent if you find that it purely is a thrombotic lesion. So what do you want to say about uh, to the fellows in training? Well, you know, to the fellows in training, I'd say hang in there. <laughs> you know, it's a, a challenging time, I think, right now in medicine. We hear so many negative things in the media about medicine and where it's going. And what I'd say is, you know, keep hope alive. There's a good reason to think that medicine, as it has always done in the past, will continue to grow and be an exciting, rewarding field. I think when you're caring for other human beings, as we always do as physicians, that has intrinsic value, no matter what happens as far as the specifics of healthcare systems, ACOs, all those other acronyms, reimbursement. Those are things that aren't under our direct control as individuals. What we can control are our interactions with our patients and colleagues, and I think the key is to keep those enjoyable. So what I would say to all the fellows is make sure you enjoy your time in fellowship and look forward to practice whatever setting that might be in because I think it'll be a bright rosy future. Thank you so much Dr. Bud for taking your time and talking to us.